Hello and welcome back to another uh, video about Terrapin the Hobbit Rogue. If you recall, last time we found ourselves back in Mine Town with a bunch of stuff, some of which we may even want. Um, so we're going to check out what's in here, see what we want to sell and what we want to keep. Um, so we got a lot of ammo here, which may be magical, probably most of it isn't. Um, we got some magical gloves, and got a couple of scrolls to price identify, and potions. Um, after that, we're going to head back up and see if we can get rid of that pesky angel that chased us down here in the first place. I mean, we were coming down here anyway, but the angel accelerated matters a little bit. All these are plus zero. Okay, that was a spectacularly uneventful uh, stretch of ammo. Okay, these are probably fumbling because they're cursed and magical, but uh, it's possible they're like cursed and dexterity or something. I don't know. So I'm going to keep them. Besides, I could always like polypile with them if I ever get to that point. So in Evil Hack, diluted potions are worse than normal ones, often. Um, so like healing potions will only heal half as much if they're diluted. Uh, and um, stuff like levitation or invisibility will generally last about half as long, uh, and so on. Um, this makes it annoying when you uh, pick stuff when you kill stuff over water because often you end up with diluted things. Um, but yeah, what can you do about that? Um, it also means that poly, uh, sorry, alchemy is for health potions is a bit less important because, um, Um, because if you, uh, sorry, I'm losing track of my train of thought. Um, it means that alchemy is less important because, like, a diluted potion of, you get diluted potions from alchemy, and a diluted potion of, say, full healing, uh, will only give you four extra HP, which is actually worse than a blessed potion of extra healing. So you don't want to take any potions of extra healing that you find and alchemize them. On the other hand, alchemizing potions of normal healing into extra healing and then into full healing is still worth it. So, um, let's see. I'm still burdened. Mm, it's kind of a pain. But there's nothing I particularly want to drop here. I mean, this nightmare I can kill without. Uh, we got too many issues, yeah. Um, and then if you recall, there were poly traps down in the mines, um, and it's much easier to get your pet to step in them if you have a leash. So I'm picking one of those up real quick. Just gonna buy it, and it's not much gold. Where's the leash key? Um, pay for that. Hopefully it's not cursed. Get some more sleep resistance. You gotta be getting there. We've killed a lot of elves. Like, more than normal, I think. Very lucky. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna pop down to the mines with my cat and see if I can turn her into 
there's something a little scarier. Um, I'm gonna just dump, let's say, all my potions here. So I'm not burdened on the way down. Um, and the level is one level down. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. The downstairs is right there. That's neat. Um, Okie doke. And then I also have a bunch of potions. Some of them are probably not too important. Oh, I went the wrong way. Um, so I might try to dilute some of them on the way back up as well to turn into holy water. Not sure about that. Yep, more crossbow bolts. Okay. Um, Anaconda is not awful, but I think pretty slow. I don't want to slow that. Yeah. Um, actually, if I take out my pickaxe and dig. This way, Hill Giant isn't awful either, but I think also still slow. A little bit slow, yeah. Does have a weapon attack, but I don't have any amazing weapons, like no artifacts. I want to say I don't know what their alignment is. Unfortunately, that's one thing that isn't shown here, so I don't know what artifacts it would use. It might be neutral though. Neutral or chaotic. Um, anywho, uh, I'm going to keep going for whatever I can get. Um, because I'm now in this little nook in the wall, there's only three spots for my pet to go when I whistle them, which makes it slightly more likely they'll land on polymorph square. Okay. No, those are my daggers. Okay. Just rooty. I could not tell you what Azuri is. I know it's supposed to be some sort of. Um, okay, I'm just gonna kick these boots so I remember that the trap is actually there. Okay. Um, I know they jump, but that's like literally all I could tell you. Pepper is like not awful. They have a digestion attack, which is neat, but they're so, so slow. Also, it's annoying that it's not can't be leashed anymore. Okay, Cop Captain. The dangerous thing about something like this is that it's smart enough to jump into a poly trap and use it up, possibly to turn into something stupid like a gecko. Luckily, it doesn't seem inclined to jump. Maybe it isn't too smart enough. I would think as a humanoid it is, but... I'm perhaps being a bit greedy, but I'm hoping for something like a dragon or... Uh, this is a real pain. Because it's going to drown and it's going to keep trying to get into the water. It's not going to drown. It's going to suffocate on land, lose HP, and it's going to want to stay in the water if it can. Oh, oh, it was already leashed. Whoops. Okay. Glass golem. I actually don't know much about them. Oh, they have decent magic resistance. That's a real pain. And they're slow. Well, I might not be able to. get it to change into something else, I don't know. Whoops. 
Oh, mimic. That's pretty useless. I wonder if they if you can bump into them. And like annoy them if they mimic something. I don't know. Okay, I'm hoping for something with high MR or failing that, something so scary that it's worth keeping around for however long it... Okay, Green Dragon, that's good, good enough. Definitely in the... Um, in the category of scary enough to keep around even though it isn't resistant to Polymorph or something like that. Um, nymph, I definitely want to get rid of. In the corpse. I remembered uh, the other day that my quest artifact grants poly control, so I definitely want to get polymorphitis. Uh, sorry, tele teleport, uh, teleportitis corpses for um, if and when I complete the quest. Oh, it's still leashed and complaining. It doesn't actually hurt the pet if you um, if you tug on them with an unkers leash. It just makes noise, that's all. Um, I'm lucky that I'm poison resistant, otherwise this breathing poison gas business would be kind of scary. Uh, but I am poison resistant, so it's all good. Um, one unfortunate thing is I have this 300 Zark mid ring. It's uncursed, so it's presumably teleport control, conflict, or er, polymorph control. And two of those are pretty useful. However, if it's conflict, I certainly don't want to put it on, around my pet, because it would wreck me. How badly would it wreck me? Yeah, with all those attacks, it could... It could it could one-shot me. 32 plus another 32 plus 20. Yeah. Barely one-shot me, but it totally could. <laughs> oh wait, but there is a teleport trap over here, and it's not level teleport. So it should be reasonably safe to just dump this on real quick. Actually, it is a peaceful moment. Doesn't seem to be getting angry at me. Um, conflict is not... it's resistible in Evil Hack, I believe I've mentioned that before, which means that it's a little harder to test for certain, um, especially with kind of bad charisma like I have. But gnomes have no magic resistance. Well, it's... I believe it's actually a check against their level. Um, but they have low level is my point, so... It's presumably polymorph control. So I'm going to keep that on, actually. Because, um, yeah, I don't have magic resistance, so... It's useful. I got my ammo out for when I need it. I'm going to be burdened either way. What hunger stuff do I have? Right, okay. Um, hmm. Shop-wise, I don't think I care about any of these, uh... I don't think I care about any of these shopkeepers. Oh, shit. It totally was conflict. Huh. Okay. The more you know. Um... That's going in the bag. Uh, I don't think I need any of these shopkeepers because I have other general stores to identify stuff, and um, and they're all you know generally more convenient than coming down to my town, so. Uh, 
I think I'm going to get my dragon to kill him if I can. Um, chameleon corpse is also useful to tin for polymorph on demand. Can save polymorph one charges for the occasional monster against which it's useful or for polypiline. Um, polymorph rings you can also use if you just wait for a super long time. But that's unreliable. And yeah. Sometimes I'll do that against like Orcus so he doesn't drain my HP as badly. Because it will drain my polymorph form HP first. Um, or I can polymorph into something undead. But uh then I have to like hang around and get him like for a hundred turns waiting to polymorph into something. So it's better if I just have a tin or a wand on me. Okay. So one nice thing about dragons is because they have an engulf attack in Evil Hack, they will engulf shopkeepers and insta kill them, which leaves you their inventory. Uh On the other hand, giants are huge and can't be engulfed, so it actually won't work against the giant. Therefore, I might actually leave the giant alive for now until I can maybe steal its inventory. That might be like the, the best call in general to, to wait to kill all these shopkeepers to like maximize my gained inventory, but I would also like to have some healing potions on me now. Um, Ijjak is a terrible, terrible idea to kill. Um, he will turn into an Archon, and yeah, you don't want that. I assume he won't be mad if a pet kills him, but he'll definitely wreck your pet, and it's just not worth it. Okay, so this gnome is not needed. Boom, dead, one shot. Love it. Uh, so these are healing and extra healing. Got a wand to sleep. That's neat. Cool. Um, might as well get these spell books. Again, I'm already burdened, so much the harm. Yeah, actually, it's only these two shops that are super useful right now. Boom, one shot again, more or less. Oh, okay. Different potion this time. Now it's uncertain which one is like a healing. Hmm. I don't know what other sh potion shopkeepers can spawn with other than healing and extra healing. It might be just a totally random drop. Or it might be, there's a third potion that's just rare, I'm not sure. Either way, ex the extra heal one potion, I found two of on Shopkeeper, so it's definitely a healing potion. Extra heal two, I'm no longer certain about. Um, so it could be either that one or the, uh, the Emerald potion. And again, might as well take whatever I can run off with here. Might as well get a spare towel, why not? You can never have too many towels. I mean, you totally can. You only need like two tops, but not really the point. Um, and then I definitely have enough gold for another round of protection, so that's cool. Anything useful about BUC stuff here does not appear so. Blessed tin. I might just eat that actually. Could be something useful. And it's probably not something that I could benefit from waiting on. Okay, not useful, but I'll eat it anyway. 
Okay, well with a green dragon, I am quite confident in facing the angel. Um, angels are probably poison resistant. Don't recall off the top of my head. But, uh... I don't think they're large. Or huge, that is. No, they aren't. So they can get engulfed, which will kill them. And also, they, he only has like 50 HP or something. Oh, I'm gonna toss my dragon. This corpse... He's blinked, which means... Or she... Is he still a she? No, I well, he was a he. thought so. Uh, he's telepathic now. He got the intrinsic from the wizard, which means that I'll always be able to see him. Once he's finished eating. Okay, he's done now. Uh, oh, and I untrapped this dark trap, so no need for that. It's good to have a dragon on your side, gotta say. Um, that said, despite my confidence, I do not want to be burdened when I go upstairs, so drop in a bunch of stuff. Okay. Just to make sure I don't forget about it. Doubt I will, but where's the angel at? Okay. Just gonna explore a little of the rest of the level to make sure there's no other surprises. There we are. And there we are. And taken care of. This long sword may have a property, I can't remember. I don't know if normal angels get special longswords a lot. Um, I know higher level angels, like uh, Aliaxes. Oh, it's blessed, so that's a good sign. Um, I know Aliaxes often get magical or enchanted longswords. Um, okay, uh, I totally forgot to dilute some potions to pray over. Honestly, I'm not sure which ones I want to dilute. Uh, I may actually just, because I have a dragon now, I'm not like, super worried about my short-term survivability. So I might go down to Sokoban, my Sokoban stash, pick up some potions I know I don't care about. Um, and come back to dilute them. And I think I have some waters, too. Uh, there's also that general store. I'm not, I don't want to kill that shop shopkeeper yet, because that store is like my most convenient price identification area. But uh, I can pay for the holy water. I have enough money. Hmm. Okay, bugbears aren't high enough level to sacrifice and get luck from. So I think I'm just gonna eat him. It would be a pain to bring him over to uh, to the altar because I'm already super burdened, so I'd probably end up stressed. All right, and going back down. You have that stash. Forgot about that. Um, oop. and I've gotten up to 18 constitutions, so that's neat. Uh, let's see, do I want to bring anything down with me? Yes, 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 oops. Uh, sure. Scrolls, yes. Spellbook potion. Actually, hmm. None of these are BUC identified, so I might want to keep them up here, actually. Certainly the Smoky Potion. I'm just going to leave it all up here, actually. Uh, is there anything I want to leave up here that 
currently I don't have. Okay, broadsword, maybe. Longsword I don't need. I'm not going to use it. Unless, uh, except for maybe forging. Probably not that either. Actually, I do have two longswords, so I could make a katana maybe. But they are both iron, so it might be a waste. It would be a, a bit of a waste, that is. Yeah, there's nothing I super really want to leave up here. Okay, here's the holy water shop level, and I need to make sure my dragon does not come and kill the shopkeeper. So, locking him in there for now. Um, you can see I can still see him due to the intrinsic telepathy he has. So that's neat. So we have a couple more thing, new things that we want to price identify. Those being scroll, um, the possible extra heal potions. If one of them isn't the hundred zork maiden, so now it's not extra healing. And the longsword. It might be enchanted. Okay, it definitely is. Um, so it's thirty gold pieces which makes it 60 total base price, or total price. Um, base price is 15. That doesn't match. Okay, other possibility is it's actually 23. I was thinking it was reduced price by the, like, one quarter for unidentified, but if it's actually 23, that means it's 45 Zork mids. Um, so that's plus three longsword. That's pretty neat. Um, that is, yeah, that's better than my other options. Might even be rust proof. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it would be nice to get my dagger up to expert. I think I'll prioritize that over increasing longsword again. But I will switch to longsword. Um, cools. Um, and I'll keep my other Mephro sword out for fighting rusty enemies, because I don't know if it's rust proof. I'll have to look up if angels generate, like what equipment they generate with. Oh, that's the other acid oil. So that one's not healing, and this one probably is. Yeah. Okay, so this is acid. I had the other potion that might have been acid, so I'm going to name it off the discovery list, just so I don't forget later. Too far. S, and that's oil. Cool. Mm, I forget how much it was. Honestly, I'll take both, because I'll take these extra normal waters, because they're cheap, and I need water. So, together, that's 255, so cool. All right, that's all I need from here. Um, at this point, I'm just going to price ID real quick, or sorry, BUC ID real quick, just to make sure, for sure, that this is definitely not unholy water. Okay, definitely not unholy water. 
So I'm going to dip my lamp in there. Alrighty. Blessed lamp. And we're going to rub that puppy. Um, so I'm going to wish for an artifact, specifically the Platinum Yandorian Express card, because it's freaking amazing. Um, it'll give me magic resistance on carry, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, and it will, uh, it gives me telepathy, which is neat. Um, and it also, you can invoke it for charging. There might be another thing it gives. I don't know. Is there an object lookup for it? Not really. Oh, it does. Oh, and half spell damage. That's right. So it, it's like really a nice uh, complement to the rogue quest artifact, which gives half physical damage and warning, but not ESP. Um, so yeah, it's it's a real good match. And the charging is just bonkers, even though I can't use the blessed charging effect. Um, if I ever find like a fire or frost torn, I can just keep it charged indefinitely. And use it against dangerous enemies that I don't want to throw daggers at. Okay, so, um, like I've mentioned, for artifact wishes, your chances of getting a, getting an artifact are, um, only dependent on other artifact wishes you've made. Um, and I don't need to wish for it fixed because it's platinum and therefore I'm automatically fixed. Uh, so, uh, where was I going with that? I'm just going to change it to a level, letter that I won't use a lot and so I don't touch it by accident. Um, So uh, your first artifact wish is guaranteed to succeed, and then the next one artifact wish has a one half chance, and then the next one a one third chance, one quarter, etc. chance of succeeding. Um, and similarly, there's a chance that you'll get a player monster or a quest leader if it's a quest artifact um, that comes along with the artifact that you wish wish for, and they'll be carrying it and they'll fight you. Um, the wiki says that there's a one-half chance of this happening uh, on the first artifact wish, but don't believe it's lies. Um, there's no chance of it happening on the first wish, and then one-half chance on the second wish, and a one-third on the th third, and so on. So wishing for more than one artifact is not only unreliable in terms of whether you actually get something, but it can also be dangerous. Although if you are making two artifact wishes, then you probably are pretty late. You know, you're late enough in the game that you can probably handle a lot of things. That said, a lot of quest leaders are buffed. Um, so they might, they're they scarier than in vanilla. Like Two Flower. Um, Two Flower is the person who'd come with a Platinum Yandorian Express card if it were to be, you know, become an issue if I wished for it second or as a second artifact or something. Uh, in vanilla, I'm pretty sure he's kind of a pushover. Like, some really minor weapon attacks. Um, and... Some really minor weapon attacks. No real resistances. In evil, he has a 40-10 attack. Still no spell casting, so you know, a lot more manageable than a lot of quest leaders, but still, that's pretty big. And a number of resistances. I think all the quest leaders and possibly all the nemeses have poison resistance, maybe death magic, and I think sleep as well, possibly. Actually, I don't think that's true. I'm pretty sure I've. Yeah, I've slept Lothamon on before. He's a pushover. <laughs> The Barbarian Quest Nemesis. Um, 
he has like no magic resistance. So if you can get to him before he picks up the quest artifact, which does grant magic resistance, it's different from the vanilla quest artifact, then you can just, I mean, you can wand of death him if you have one, or you can just sleep him or cancel him, or do any number of nasty things to him, and he'll be pretty much useless, because he's all about spell casting. Um, so yeah, most of this stuff I'm just going to dump here. Keep a teleportation, teleportation scroll for emergencies. Honestly, I'm not going to carry Sting around anymore. Don't really need it. sickness if I decide to dip my daggers. I'll keep one of these potions of healing. Blessed, that's nice. Eh, I might as well keep the diluted one, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. One thing that annoys me, it's really only, it's my own fault, but uh, the way I have my menu color set up, it, I didn't want white to be the default color for Unknown BC, because I want that to be the default color for Known Uncursed. Um, but that means that uh, the, the way I had to pattern match it so that it would turn everything blue by default was by and so that it would work with both curses and TTY. The only way I could think of was to go off of the AUM thing that you get at the end of everything in open inventory. But it means it's kind of difficult to tell what things are uncursed in the bag. Minor pain, but still a pain. Actually, I'll keep these here. Don't need two wands to sleep. Don't need any candles. Don't need two lamps. I do want to keep that mirror. I don't know why I was carrying that in the bag instead of open inventory. Because it's a good scare option for animals. I feel like maybe I could have been doing that more. Um. Alright, oh, and I have a whole bunch of gems, which I don't need. Finally, what potions do I have? Um, okay, I can price ID this. Actually, are there any scrolls? Nope, no scrolls I want to price ID. And then I just want to see if any of this stuff looks ripe for dilution. And I want to say no. Maybe these... Um, 50 is the invisible, which could be useful, maybe. Uh, booze, sickness is already identified, could be fruit juice too. None of those are like necessary. Booze is like better confusion, in my opinion, because it confuses you and also heals you a little bit. I mean, one hit point, so whatever, but still better than nothing. Um, so it's not like totally useless, but usually I'll just cast a forgotten spell if I want to confuse myself. Okay, bring this wand of great monster so I can sacrifice some stuff. Uh, 
mithril broadsword. I will bring this so I can name Orchrist and maybe sacrifice elves or eat them as the mood takes me. Scrolls to BC identify their light shouldn't be a problem. Any potions I really need to bring up. I want to be used to identify healing stuff. I think that's good for now. I have two potions of water, which is enough to um Oh and I have cancellation wands in here. Definitely don't want to bring those around. Um What was I saying? Two potions of water is enough to bless my unicorn horn and my bag of holding. Which are like the most important things, so I'm cool with that. Or wait, but I do have I, even as I said that I brought the other potions with me. Do I want I'll wait till I identify them. Um open oh, wings and do so fun fact about cancellation, wherever that went. Yep, definitely on the floor. Um, in Evil Hack, you can. There's no amount of nesting will protect your bag of holding if you put cancellation or another bag of holding or bag of tricks or whatever inside. Um, just if a anything dangerous to a bag of holding finds its way inside a bag of holding by any means it will blow up the bag. 100% chance. Except Magic Bane, which is only ever a one-third chance. Um, but yeah, that means that... I think even van in vanilla it might be that one level of nesting isn't enough to protect you. Don't recall for sure. But uh, certainly in Evil Hack, there's no point in carrying around wands and bags of um, ones of cancellation in a bag just to protect it from blowing up a bag of holding if you place your whole inventory in or whatever. Um, still useful for protecting you from putting unknown BUC stuff in a your holding bag or to put it in a bag so that it's not an open inventory where it can be blown up by lightning. Um, but yeah, carrying around a cancellation wand is there's literally no safe way to do it. Um, which, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> um, because they're useful ones, but I just, it's, I only have the one bag of holding, kind of relying on it to be able to carry all the stuff I want to. So it's totally not worth um, screwing that up. And there's not that many things that I want to cancel immediately, anyway. Okay, what stuff do I want to be easy to identify? Scroll, sure, potions, why not? Anything else I want to bring up? Well, if I have the inventory, I'll bring up the gems and the... <laughs> Oh, and the scimitar and this bubble. Oh. Basically, I don't. Everything but the poison arrows, which I don't need. That means there's no longer a stash to speak of here. I'm not putting the like, platinum Indorian Express card in because. Um, speaking of which, I should use it for my tinning kit because I don't have anything else really worth using it on yet. But I don't want to put it in my bag because it would blast me and I'd take it out later and it would blast me again. Plus, I need to carry it in open inventory to, uh. Um, to get the magic resistance and the ASP and the half spell damage. So, yeah, I'm gonna drop it on the altar, of course, to be easy to identify it and then. Barring particular shenanigans of various sorts. Oh, he brought my 
Or wait, was this chest here? They must have been. I don't know. Anyway, um, barring any particular shenanigans, I will hopefully not have to drop it at all. Although I'm sure I will at some point for like, I don't know, um, identification or something. Even then I might not drop it. You'll note I've put it, I mean, my key, or my lockpick that I'm using, I have a key too, odd. Uh, it's, a, it's at a pretty early letter in the alphabet, just because that's where I always put it. But also, it's important to make sure that if you have a quest artif an unlocking quest artifact, like the master key or the PYEC, um, if it's not your quest artifact, so if it would blast you when you touch it, you want to make sure it's past any other lock unlocking tool you have in your inventory. Because otherwise, if you like try to open a door or whatever, um, it'll prompt you to use the quest artifact to unlock it. And if you're not, you know, it's just a real pain to have to say no every time. Plus, if you're not careful, you might say yes and get blasted unnecessarily. Okay, so drop that, pick it up, get blasted. Ouch. Um, I don't really have enough health to be comfortable doing that a lot, but luckily I don't have to. Woo. Uh, actually, because I have access to unlimited charging, the, uh, the Wand of Create Monster, I don't want to necessarily burn it out, because I can recharge it and get more use out of it. Um, in Evil Hack, resting is different, for lack of a better word. Um, I mean, it is different. There's no, that is the right word, but, uh, you don't. If, if you zap a wand with no charges, uh, it, oh, I zapped the wrong thing, shoot. I mean, there could be worse things than having light around the altar, but that was silly. Why is it even in the F slot? You can be J, I guess. Um, if you zap a wand that has no charges, it never has nothing happen. Um, you'll either rest a charge with a reasonably large probability compared to in vanilla. It's like one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, depending on BUC of the wand. Um, or it'll just immediately cr crumble to dust without giving you a charge. So zapping on ID bonds, um, that is zapping ones when you don't know their charges, is a bad idea if you want to keep your own to recharge it. And of course doubly bad if it's wishing. <laughs> I mean it's already a bad idea just because you don't want to accidentally rest a wand a charge even in vanilla since they're so useful, but in Evil Hack you'll definitely destroy the wand if um, if you zap it when it has no charges. Uh, on the other hand, randomly generated ones of Wishing and Evil Hack always are generated um, already recharged ones. So if you find one in the dungeon, you can just zap it, get as many wishes as you can out of it. No need to wish for charging unless you need it for other things. Um, and then you can dust it and move on with no regrets. Okay, cleaned up all the zombies. They're old, so I couldn't sacrifice them. Got a hobbit. Let's see if I can get my dragon to kill it just so it's out of the way, but I certainly don't want to sacrifice it. Make my god mad. Um, actually, I should move my... Uh, I mean, cool. Okay, super cool. I love the Vorpal Blade. This is kind of awesome, but on the other hand... I don't want a, little, a couple points of luck here, bro. <laughs> oh, they just keep coming. Um, I should move my uh, dragon away. Like, lock him in a closet or something, if I can find one. Because he can eat 
corpses. Like with this digestion attack, I won't leave a corpse. And I want corpses, so I can sacrifice them. Okay, um, time for another weapon redo. Uh, gonna be dual wielding longswords. Definitely want to enhance the longsword skill now. Because um, they're both better than my short swords. It's finally happened. I'm probably never looking back. Unless I get Fire and Frostbrand. Even then... So you can... For there are a couple of artifacts that you can forge together as well. Uh, You can, there are a couple of recipes, six specifically, um, for two artifacts that will give you another artifact that is, you know, a brand new evil hack one. And fire and more zombies, just not my day to day. Um, with fire and frostbrand, if you forge them together, you get a steel longsword called the Sword of Annihilation. Um, and it does uh, 1d10 extra disintegration damage and has a in the current version a 1 in 10 chance but in the next version it'll be 1 in 12 um, chance of disintegrating the target which insta kills them regardless of so it's like the vorpal blade sort of except a much higher chance of it happening um, and it doesn't require a head to kill it um, the only thing that can stop it is disintegration resistance. On the other hand, it also disintegrates the whole inventory of the monster, so it can be a bad thing. Um, still, it's you know it's a longsword, which is a good base type. It's literally indestructible, um, and its extra damage and insta kill are pretty helpful against a lot of bosses. So. It's a real nice weapon, and probably, and it would allow me to, you know, use another artifact as well. So that would probably be better than dual wielding fire and frostbrand. Yeah. Ugh, more zombies. It just, it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. On the other hand, I can tin these, so that's nice. Wield a dagger and eat those tins right away. And that was enough. Okay. I mean, I'll eat the rest, because why not? I mean, maybe I could save them in case of gremlin attack, but... That seems unnecessarily paranoid. Oh, and just in time to get some more elves. <laughs> um, I don't... I guess I can sacrifice them now. That's neat. Um, this also means I can always get crowned to unrestricted weapon type. Uh, I mean, rogues get a lot of the really nice ones. I mean, possible ones I could see wanting are, of course, long, short, short sword, saber. Those I can all get to skilled in, at least. Two-handed sword I may use against a specific monster. Possibly. And I can get to basic in that, which is fine. That's enough. Uh, the only thing I could see myself definitely, um, possibly wanting is Trident, because there's a weapon called Angel Slayer, which, as the name suggests, slays angels. <laughs> um, and not only does it do extra fire damage against any non-fire resistant monster, but it also has a 1 in 10 chance of killing, insta-killing angels including, you know, Archangels and Archons and stuff. So, it's a real nice weapon to have in the endgame. Alright. Um, Valorously means it was a, uh... It wasn't an artifact, it was a normal weapon, as can be seen by the absolute lack of artifacts here. Unfortunately, since there's a bunch of other elvish crap here, I don't know off the top of my head which one it actually is. Um, I mean, it's definitely not the Mithril Spear. 
because that was thrown at me. Actually, it might be... Well, he wouldn't give me a Mithril Spear. Mithril Spear, because I'm not trained in one. Trained in that. Um, and it was an Omen Sphere. And I'm carrying it in my inventory. Okay. Don't have to press the point home that much. That said, I don't know why an Omen... Maybe, maybe, maybe he would give me a Sphere. I don't know. Because I don't know why an Omen... Uh, Monster would have one. Okay, let's just see what's blessed, because it's definitely going to be blessed, whatever it is. Okay. Well, it could be either this or it could be this. Um, it's also going to be enchanted plus three to plus five. So we can just wear ID the helm. It's plus zero. So it must be the spear which is spectacularly useless. Um, yeah, I guess I could sell it for a decent amount of money, but I can also just slaughter shop shopkeepers with my dragon if I need the money, so... Or steal it. I really need to work on that. So yeah, that was totally not worth it. Um, I think I'm actually going to leave off with the... create monster zapping um, until I've identified it. So I'm just going to name Orcrist, possibly kill some elves, and then when I can pray again I'll get holy water. Just going to wear ID these elven cloaks in case they happen to be enchanted, but they are not. So I'm sticking rid of my leather because it leather gives an extra point of AC. Name Orcrist. Elf comes out of the shadows. Does not leave a corpse. Oh well. I need to remember to bring this. I'm going to leave that over here. Um, okay, I no longer care about Orcrist either. Well, but I'll, I'll keep it around because, like, it feels weird to just leave an artifact lying around. Theoretically, I could use this to forge an elven longsword. Um, if I find like a mithril elven shortsword, I can combine them into a mithril elven longsword, um, which would be... Mm, yeah, it would be an upgrade over a plus three iron longsword. Um, elven longswords are exactly like katanas, except very slightly lighter, like if they're both made of mithril, then an elven longsword is two units lighter. Uh, but um, a katana has a plus one accuracy, so they're slightly better. Uh, I'm going to keep going with create monster actually because I do not have corpses yet to appease my god. And it seems unlikely that I will get any, because I keep getting zombies. It might be a factor of the level I'm on. Like, I'm low enough that there's not many, um, not, not that many monsters that can generate on the level. No gold stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, dusted the wand. I'm not too torn up about it. If I get a bag of tricks, that can be recharged indefinitely. Um, so that's another great synergy with um, the Andorian Express card. Because I'm never going to be a great spellcaster, so like, cast and create monster to farm on an altar is not an amazing choice for me. Although maybe I could make it work if I had like a good helmet of brilliance or something. But I can instead just, you know, uh, charge a bag of tricks habitually, and that's good enough. Speaking of which, I might as well. Oh, I don't want to name it. I want to invoke it. I might as well try to recharge my tank again. So there's like an optimum invocation schedule for getting the most uses out of it, which is relevant for something like the PYEC where 
it's never useful in a combat situation. Um, but it is always useful. So you pretty much want to be invoking it as much as possible, as often as possible. Um, at least provided you have something where there's no downside to charging it, which would be tinning kits, fire and frost horns, bags of tricks. Although in that case, you need to carry the bag around in your inventory, which is kind of a downside. Um, but uh, as long as you have something that there's basically no downside to charging, you want to be charging it as much as you can. Um, that said, the optimum invocation schedule is like bizarre. Uh, it's it's not even consistent. Like so, yeah. It's I don't want to have to remember that, um, and I certainly am not paying enough attention to the turn count to keep track of it. Because it's like you have to wait 80 turns, and then if the artifact's ignoring you, you have to wait like 89 turns, and then if the artifact's still ignoring you, you have to wait 83 turns. None of those numbers are accurate, but that's the general idea. Um, and I do not have time for that. Um, so generally, I'll just, I mean, I'll, if I'm paying attention to the turn count, which is certainly not guaranteed, I will try to invoke it like roughly every 100 turns, um, which is close enough for my purposes. I'm really hoping to appease my god. I shouldn't be leaving my green dragon alone, actually. Don't want him to get un untamed. Um, but I'm hoping to appease my god so I can pray for holy water real quick before I leave again. Uh, I'm gonna go after the. Nope, don't pick up my attendant kit. I'm just leaving that there. So I'm not burdened. Um, So yeah, I'm just kind of trawling around for sacrifices, because I don't have any crate monster or grist or anything to generate them myself. I should be more careful around the zombies. I can cure the sickness now, fine. They can still give me amnesia, though. Um, which is always a massive pain, of course. Oh, we've got some cave spiders now. And I don't even need to worry about feeding one to my dragon because it's green and therefore already poisoned me this time. Um, I'd say as early game dragons go, I guess green dragon is a pretty good choice because, you know, they can insta kill stuff. Um, but of course, you know, with their breath, I guess. Um, but of course, dragons can also insta kill anything that's smaller than huge with their digestion attack, so that's true of any dragon. Um, obviously gray and silver dragons are still useful for their magic resistance uh, against polymorph and... actually, I don't... do gray dragons resist polymorph? I'm not sure. I know they don't resist taming, for instance. They do resist poly traps, so that's something. I'm gonna circle around this way so I can keep my distance. Uh, honorable mention goes to the black dragons for their disintegration breath, and also they have a passive attack. So if some a monster attacks a black dragon in melee, or if you attack one, then their weapon, if they're using one, or themselves, if they aren't, will get a little bit disintegrated, with a chance of getting totally disintegrated. It's a real pain. Okay, back to Happy God. Um, it's a real pain if you have a steed, because it will kick a black dragon, um, or you know any pet that's reasonably high level, will try to attack a black dragon, even if they have no chance of killing it. Oh, I don't want, I want to party. Um, my luck's probably not super high. But I'm sleep and poison resistant, which are like the main ones, so I don't need to get crowned immediately. 
plus I have Warple Blade. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping to save it for maybe Angel Slayer, or... I don't know. Yeah, mostly Angel Slayer would be what I'd be saving it for. So I'm going to drop my Luckstone just to make sure, or, or, I mean, it's not certain, but make it much less likely for me to get ground. Um, other favors, uncursing, I don't have anything really cursed, gems don't count. Um, I guess I can uncurse this dagger, but I'll name it just so I know it's probably negatively enchanted. label because I looted that vault. No longer have a stash here. No longer have a stash here. I'll be going back eventually for Mine's End anyway. But I don't like to leave labels that are no longer useful because, you know, it dilutes the importance. I keep on being wise and I have no idea what that's from. Because, I mean, I'm using my tooled horn a lot, but that's abusing my wisdom. And I don't know what I'm actually... I, I guess I'm searching. I have intrinsic searching, so I'm doing a good amount of that. It's really enough for my wisdom, but I, I mean, obviously it is enough to exercise my wisdom, but I'm a little surprised at that. Okay, so now we're going back to Sokoban, and we are wrecking that gelatinous cube. It is going down. My green dragon can't really fight against it. Um, it won't get engulfed by the cube since it's huge, but... Or gigantic, I think, technically. But it will get paralyzed. Yeah, it's gigantic. Um, oh, I should have brought uh, down a chest with me. I'll need to go back for one. Because I don't want to just leave my stuff hanging out in the open here. Um, okay, well, we're back in Sokoban. We'll have to run an errand for the chest, but I think this is a good stopping point. Um, and next time, we will finally get our prize. That's exciting. Uh, see you then. Bye.